Welcome to WaverWise, navigating New York's 1115 updates, your go-to micro-podcast for the latest insights and updates on New York State's 1115 waiver. In each short episode, we'll break down the complex world of healthcare waivers, providing you with concise and clear updates on how these changes impact healthcare in the Empire State. Whether you're a healthcare professional, policymaker, or just someone curious about the evolving landscape of healthcare in New York, join us as we navigate through the intricacies of the 1115 waiver updates, offering valuable perspectives and key takeaways in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Robin, uh, Chief Data Analyst at Helgerson Solutions Group. I'm going to speak a little bit on the evaluation component and evaluation approach for a new demonstration waiver. Like the other components of the waiver, the, the evaluation in theory and design is very robust, very comprehensive from a, any kind of research perspective. It's a top-notch in design. It's tailored specifically to the various components of the demonstration, the HRSN, the SUD, the hospital global budget, WEOs, the HERO, they, all of them will be evaluated pretty rigorously and thoroughly through this approach. The interesting piece, and this also is consistent with the rest of the waiver, is going to be issues of, to me, time, quality, and impact. The state will submit an evaluation plan within 180 days of approval. So that's that puts us, I believe, in the beginning of July. Other components of the waiver, the implementation plan for HRSN services, for example, are due in September or nine months after approval. So once those documents are initially submitted, there'll probably be some back and forth with CMS, and it puts us probably late this calendar year before things are up and running. The interim evaluation report is due at the end of March in 2026. So that is about a year and a half after things are initially put into place. When you look at what it's going to take for an independent evaluator to conduct this work, and the state will be selecting an entity, an organization to be the independent evaluator. So as always, when normal timeframes are constrained, then you jump to quality concerns. Are, are the shortcuts going to be taken? And an evaluation, an evaluation, even if it's conducted by the best of evaluators, and the design is seamless, as this one for the most part seems to be, an evaluation can only be as good as the data used to create it. So given the, the rushed timeline, the comprehensiveness, the accuracy, the general quality of the data that will be given to the evaluators are obviously going to dictate the relevancy and accuracy of their conclusions. Once if quality is sustained, then you get to the question of impact, which ultimately is why you do an evaluation. My hope is the evaluation doesn't end up just being a retrospective look back or an accountability feature or just a report that kind of is, hey, how'd we do? To me, the evaluation in the spirit of continuous improvement and feedback loops, the main point of it is to improve services. And I, I would hope that some of the hypotheses and research questions to be addressed by evaluators and in the evaluation design will have to do with what needs were identified, what improvements were made, what were we doing better in year two of the demonstration than we were doing in year one of the demonstration. I think beyond just how many people were screened or did we meet this objective and these outcomes? Having an eye on improving services through the use of data is the most important thing I think that a good evaluation can contribute. Obviously, when all is said and done, I believe 18 months after the demonstration period is over, a final evaluation report is due, and that will be kind of the great reckoning where some pretty comprehensive questions will be, will be answered. Evaluators are expected for each component of the demonstration to have hypotheses specified, to have research questions specified, to have rigorous analysis design in place. So CMS prioritizes gold standard research designs of randomized trials. When those aren't possible, quasi-experimental designs, the evaluators are going to be expected really to cross every T and dot every I when it comes to to evaluating the components of the, the demonstration. Another timeline challenge is just going to be access to and availability of data. So the, the independent evaluators will exist not above the agencies actually implementing the demonstration, but kind of the nature of independent evaluation, they're a little bit off to the side, kind of orbiting the whole demonstration structure. They're going to need to pull data from the HERO, from SCNs, 
from the SUD agencies that every component of the demonstration is going to have to feed data into the evaluation and to the independent evaluators. So the data infrastructure build and the time it takes to have integrated systems or sophisticated information systems to get social, especially the social care agencies and CBOs to a point where their data are meaningful and accessible is going to have to precede quality evaluation. The evaluators kind of have to wait for a lot of the other pieces to be in place before they'll have the tools, the information they need to do their work at at the highest level. It's not impossible, I wouldn't say, but it's going to be a whirlwind for sure for everybody to to meet the, the deadlines that are in place here. Early steps in the data integration process is going to have to be So one of the early challenges, I think, is going to be getting the social care agencies, community-based organizations on board and integrated into the data systems. These agencies, we know their their data literacy and sophistication runs the gamut. Some of them barely have internet access. Others have been working with the healthcare community more, are, are already fairly integrated. It'll be easier. But The waiver really requires a standardization across agencies and a a comprehensive approach. Addressing that statewide uh, is going to be an early challenge. So for now, we're on hold waiting for the independent evaluator to be identified. Once that agency is specified, the evaluation design will be submitted this summer. The design needs to be tailored to match very specifically the components of the new waiver. And the hypotheses, the research questions that are detailed in that design will be a kind of a roadmap for the path that the evaluators plan to walk. We'll wait till that comes out. It's going to be very interesting data mountain that that they climb uh, over these next few years. Interim evaluation report will be here before we know it in early 2026. And I hope there's a maintained focus on improving services through the use of data.